Today I'm going to show you what's inside of a car alternator and how it works to charge the battery on your car. So to remove the alternator you need to remove the power line that goes to it. And then remove this electrical connector. The alternator is held on by a 12 millimeter bolt here and a 14 millimeter bolt at the bottom. And now with the alternator free I can remove it from the vehicle. Now I've got the alternator removed from the vehicle. Of course we have your pulley here which is powered by the crankshaft. Then up here we have the terminal that connects to the positive side of the battery. At the back here we have the plug for the voltage regulator. And then we have the casing here which is made of aluminum which dissipates heat better and it doesn't magnetize. Now an alternator's responsibility is to take mechanical energy from the spinning crank pulley and convert it to electrical energy so that it can charge the battery on your engine so it can run all the accessories in the car. So I'm going to remove the crank pulley. It's a 22 millimeter bolt. And then I can pop off the pulley. Now I'm going to unbolt the positive terminal. Now this plastic spacer actually isolates the positive side of this from the grounded side of the alternator. Now on the back of the alternator we have four 8 millimeter nuts that go around the circumference as well as three 8 millimeter nuts that hold this casing on. There's this little spider I found inside of the alternator. Move from here. Now I'm going to remove this cap. See this is the ew, spider web. You can see there's these little spiders inside of there. Go away. Now I'm going to continue removing these 8mm bolts around their circumference. Now on the back of the alternator here we have the rectifier as well as the voltage regulator that has this heat sink. I'm going to proceed by removing all these Phillips screws that hold the voltage regulator in. And then I can remove the voltage regulator as an assembly here. And then we've got your brushes here that connect it to the rotor. Now in order to remove the rectifier I'm going to remove these Phillips screws that go around the circumference. And then I can remove the rectifier here. And with the rectifier and the air voltage regulator out of the way, I can remove the aluminum casing. Now inside of the casing here, you can see we have a bearing that goes around here. And on the inside here, we have the rotor which spins inside of the stator. The rotor itself has these fan blades on it, and that's just to provide a little bit of extra cooling through the alternator, through the fins of the casing. Now if we take a closer look at the stator winding coils here, you can see that there's a total of four terminals. This one here is a common because it's got six wires going to it, and then these other ones here go to the three individual coils in the stator winding. Now I'm going to remove the rotor. And you can see that's what the rotor looks like. So here's an overall system diagram of how your alternator works. Over here you have the stator and that generates alternating current. Then it goes over to the rectifier where it's changed over to direct current and then it goes out to the battery. Now some of that alternating current is directed down to your voltage regulator which will control the amount of power going to the rotor. Now the amount of power in your electromagnet will essentially determine how much the stator can produce to charge the battery based on the sensing wire from the battery voltage. So in essence the entire thing works works like a closed loop control system so it's always generating a fixed voltage so it doesn't overcharge or undercharge your battery. So here's a closer look inside of the stator. You can see that all the coils are wrapped around these iron cores here and that just helps it to create some electrical energy from the electromagnet that's spinning around. And on the inside here we have another bearing for the rotor. Now the rotor is basically the core of the alternator and it consists of your shaft that has two bearings on either side so it spins smoothly. We've got fan blades on this side and on this side to help with airflow. And then inside of here we have coil windings that wrap around an iron core. Now we all remember from simple mechanics that if you've got a coil that has power running through it from a power source in the presence of a north and a south pole, well it's going to experience a force upward in this direction and downward in this direction causing the coil to actually rotate about this axis. Now the reverse of this is exactly how the alternator works in that the north and south poles are actually replaced by a magnet that's rotating in the middle instead of being stationary on the outside and your coils are placed stationary outside on the stator. Now when your electromagnet in the middle will rotate it'll actually generate energy in the coils and that'll be able to charge your battery. Now this basically acts like a giant electromagnet with these triangles here acting as a finger magnet. So what it is is basically this side of the finger magnets are charged with a north pole all the way around and then this side here is charged with a south pole going all the way around. So essentially what you have is this rotates is a changing pole direction so north south north south north south and that rotates and that basically generates alternating current because the poles are alternating. Now this type of alternating pole rotor is called a salient pole rotor. Now regular DC motors and dynamometers actually use a permanent magnet that either rotates or is stationary against coils in order to generate an electromagnetic field. But in this case this is not a permanent magnet and it actually has to be powered up in order to become an electromagnet and that's powered through this voltage regulator. 
and the voltage regulator gets its power from the battery and it will actually contact this rotor here through these brushes and that's how it powers the coils in the inside here to turn this into an electromagnet. Now the problem is this pulley is going to spin at different RPM given your engine load and that's going to spin the rotor at different RPM. So now for a given electromagnetic voltage you're going to have varying outputs depending on the RPM. Well again that's where the voltage regulator will come in and actually regulate the voltage that goes into the electromagnet so it can regulate the output of the alternator to what is actually achieved in the stators so that it always achieves 14 volts to charge the battery. Now the way the voltage regulator works is we've got power that comes in AC from your stator winding and it compares that to the battery voltage. Now if your battery voltage is too low, let's say it drops below 12 volts, it'll send more power over to the rotor winding through the slip rings here. Now this acts like an electromagnet and that'll cause the stator to generate more energy so it can power the battery. Now these brushes here are responsible for transferring the power from the voltage regulator to your electromagnet through these two slip rings here. Now often at times these brushes here will start to wear out mechanically as this thing rotates here and that could cause a miscommunication between your voltage regulator causing your alternator to stop charging your battery and then it fails. Now as we know when a magnet passes through a coil it will actually generate a little electrical current inside of that coil. Now in this case here we have three separate coil windings that are spaced 180 degrees apart. Now instead of using a permanent magnet we're going to be using the salient pole rotor which is an alternating magnetic field that rotates and that will generate alternating current that is 120 degrees phased apart from each other. Now because the stator produces three phase alternating current your battery actually needs 14 volts of direct current so that's achieved by using this bridge rectifier. Now this rectifier will actually take the three inputs you've got your inputs along the outside here and convert it from AC to DC so that it can actually be used to charge the battery. Now that's done by using a bridge rectifier which consists of diodes. Now the way the bridge rectifier works is it's going to take alternating current which is in the form of a sine wave here and it's going to chop off all of these bottom parts of the waves and mirror it onto the top here so it becomes just like this one. Now to do that we have six diodes here to which the stator windings are wired to the middle of. Now these diodes actually act like one-way check valves in that it allows positive energy to flow straight to the battery but it doesn't allow negative energy to flow to the battery. And that's how you get the mirror here where your positive is allowed through but the negative is not allowed through and it's actually mirrored over onto the positive side. Finally we have this capacitor here and that acts like a big storage tank or a filter and that's just going to fill in the gaps in between these waves here to give you a nice flat and direct current. Now this one's a little bit painted here but you can see that you've got your electrical connection inside of there that'll travel along inside of here and that'll go to the diode which is this circle thing over here and over here there's a total of six diodes for the three phase alternating current. Now it's actually more efficient to produce three phase alternating current as opposed to a single phase even though you're rectifying it later. Now the voltage regulator is actually another common failure point in alternators. When one of those fails what's going to happen is your voltage that's coming out of your alternator is going to be so high or so low that it either discharges the battery or it overcharges the battery and it causes the alternator output to just pretty much burn up these coils on the inside here because it can't self-regulate this electromagnet to tell it how much to generate. Now for all you oldies out there, back in those days the voltage regulator was actually a mechanical device that was powered off of the rotor itself. Nowadays it's actually this electrical device here and if you disconnect your battery while the car is running well your car is not going to have a voltage regulator to work anymore because there's no power coming from the battery to power this guy and then your voltage is just going to spike on your alternator and that's going to fry your computer. And that's pretty much all the components that go into making the alternator on your car work.